Allah tells us that those who victimized, those who oppressed, those who wronged others and got away with it and the victims died or were persecuted because of them and they had no other helpers, Allah says, don't think that I am unaware of what they're doing. I am just awaiting them on a day which will be worse than here. Why give them the punishment here? It's easy. Why give them the punishment here? 60, 70 years, so what? In the hereafter, Allah is saying, no. I'm going to let them live in a law, in a state, where it will be eternal punishment. That's what I'm doing for them. Because in this life, I have promised, it's just a test. The real, if Allah subhanahu wa says, I'm not going to punish you here, I'm going to punish you in the hereafter, this person's gone, he's finished. Because the punishment here means no more punishment in the hereafter. It says, I am, He is only awaiting them for it to a day when the eyesight, listen to the description here, the eyesight, the sight, this, these eyes, when you look at them, staring, the description here is, is terrifying about looking at a person, these, these victimizers. You'll see them, their eyes will be, will be looking and staring in absolute terror. They won't even blink. They'll be, you know, like a mountains on your back. Their heads will be dangled down. In fear, in shame, in humiliation. When hellfire is brought, when hellfire is brought, they try to look away and they'll be forced to look from the edge of their eye. And they'll, you know, when a person is afraid, they'll look like this. The angels will force them to look. Will force them to look and they will not be even be allowed to look only from the edge of their eye. They'll force them to look at Jahannam that's going to curse them and, and, and torture them. Their hearts that will feel like it's not inside of them anymore. It's outside. You know, like I can't explain it. When a person's so frightened that you feel your heart reaches your throat, you know, like you're, you're thirsty for water and you can't swallow anymore. You say, Your heart's reached my, my throat, it's about to come out out of fear out of terror. Allah says, they'll feel like they have no heart anymore. It's out, it's gone. So much terror for them. So this is one of the ways that some of them will stand. So on that day, the first one that will be raised is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from earth. And he'll be rubbing off some dirt off his, off, his, off, his, off his head. Then everyone will be raised according to their importance, to their deeds. So the prophets will be raised followed by the next most important people, then the third most important people, and so on and so forth. The criminals and the disbelievers will be the last. Why? The believers and the good people will be gathered in the front rows, and in the good rows, and in the good places. When they are all occupied and there is no more good, secure places left, when the criminals are raised, they will try to look for safety and shelter, but they can't find it. It's been occupied. This is one of the wisdoms why the believers and the good people will be raised before the criminals. They have the first, you know, as we say, first in best dressed. Well, that's basically how it's going to be. The criminals, disbelievers will be raised. The munafiqeen will be raised, the hypocrites. And they'll be raised somewhere close to the believers. We'll talk about this, inshallah, later on. Why the munafiqeen are close to the believers and what will happen to them. Munafiqeen means the hypocrites. Those who looked like they were Muslim on the outside, but on the inside, they're actually disbelievers. Why? That's a torment on its own, to be close to them and then being denied. As for the others, their situation is clearer than the hypocrites. Because the hypocrites were unclear in this life, they will also be unclear in the hereafter. And will also be unclear in Jahannam, in Hellfire. Allah will also always be giving them what looks like opportunities to be saved, but then sucks them back in to Hellfire. The Munafiqin will have the worst. So, they will also be gathered with the people whom they used to imitate and be like. Rasul Sallallahu said, يُحْشَرُ الْمَرْءُ مَعْمَنْ أَحَبْ On the Day of Judgment, every person will be gathered with those whom they used to love. This is a good sign for the believers who love Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But it is a bad sign for those who love someone else. Love means you are loyal to them, imitate them, obey them, make them the first in decision making. And the way we dress, the way we look, the way we talk, the way we walk, the way we act, we copy the people we love and admire the most, don't we? The companions said, Ya Rasulullah, when we are with you, we feel closer to Allah. When we walk away, when we're by ourselves, we feel that we commit a bit more sins. We are afraid. What's going to happen to us? Rasul said, person will be gathered with those who they love. 
the companions said, Wallahi, there was not, until that day, there was not a day more cheerful to us than the day when Prophet said, you will be gathered with those whom you love. 